Hello, my name is Rita Horner. I'm the Technical Marketing Manager in the Mixed Signal IP Group. And I'm David Rennie, I'm a Senior Analog Design Engineer in the Mixed Signal IP Group. David, BCI Express Gen 3 defines a simple CTLE and a single tap DFE in its base spec definition. But most of the designs I have seen so far have very complex CTLE designs in addition to multi-tap DFE. Do we really need this level of complexity? That's a good question, Rita. I think if we look at PCI Express, they've done a very good job of defining what we need to do in order to make the PHI compliant. In order to understand some of the design choices we make, I think it's instructive that we go to the PCIe spec and let's look at how they do jitter tolerance uh, setup. So in this figure here, we can see the setup for the jitter tolerance. On the left-hand side, we have the transmitter setup, and then we go through a channel, and we're gonna, for PCIe 3, we assume a 20 dB channel. And then we go through a reference receiver, and then with all of the non-idealities we put into the transmitter, the random jitter, the sinusoidal jitter, and with the uh, differential interference we put on the channel, we basically set everything up so that at the end of the reference receiver we get an eye opening that is only 0.3 UI wide and has an eye height of 25 millivolts peak to peak differential. This is a very, very small eye opening that we are left with. Now one of the things that's important to understand is that this reference receiver, well it has you know, a pretty simple CTLE and a one tap DFE. These are ideal. So there's no noise and the DFE tap resolution is infinite and the slicer is ideal so it can sample a very, you know, infinitely small input voltage. In reality, when we design our circuits, we don't have the luxury of ideality. We have to design real circuits and as such we have to deal with noise and we have to deal with nonlinearities and we have to deal with process variations. And all these effects mean that in order to meet the spec, we have to design a receiver that exceeds the simple design in the reference receiver that's defined in the spec. It goes beyond this. When our customers come to us, they don't just give us channels that strictly comply with the spec. They often give us channels with losses that are significantly higher than what's defined in the spec, and they still expect us to work. So because of all these reasons, when we, when we design our receiver equalization, it's typically much more complex than is strictly defined in the spec. Thank you. That was very informative. For more information, please contact us at synopsis.com slash PCI Express. Thank you.